Okay. Awesome. Okay. So with that being said, um, Rohan, whenever you're ready, and uh, or whenever you're ready, we'll get started with Speller 27. Okay, I'm ready. You can start. So, um, Speller 27, um, can you say something so I can see you on speaker view? Hello. Okay, I can see you. Yeah, good job keeping your hands in the frame. Your word is courtier. Courtier. Can I have all the information, please? Yes. The word can be pronounced courtier, courtier, or courtier. It's a noun. It's from Middle English, and it means an attendant at a sovereign's court. Alex had been an excellent courtier of the very best tradition. Courtier. Oh, wait, wait. Courtier. Courtier. Okay. C O U R T. I E R courtier. That is correct. Great job. Next up, we have speller number twenty-nine. Hello. Your word is cichlid. Cichlid. C I C H L I D. Cichlid. Perfect. That is correct. Next up, we have number 37. Hi. I'm here. Your word is canal. Can I have all the um, information, please? Yeah, sure. Canal is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from French, and it means a ball or oval of forcemeat mixture cooked in boiling water or stock and served as a garnish or as a separate dish. Robert enjoyed a salmon bisque and caviar cannel for dinner. Cannel. Cannel. C O N N E L. Cannel. Great try. The correct spelling is Q U E N E L L E. Congrats on making it this far. Our next speller is speller number 39. Oh, can you say something? Spell thirty nine. I need to see you on speaker view. Say hello or something. Srinivy. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh. I can't see um her right now, so other judges just watch her. For me. Okay, your word is Capaletti. Capaletti. Can I get the definition, please? Capaletti means small cases of dough usually filled with meat or cheese. Uh, wait. Capaletti. Um, can I get the part of speech, please? Capaletti is a plural noun. Capaletti. Can I get the language, please? Capaletti is from Italian. Capaletti. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, Capaletti. Capaletti. Could you repeat the word, please? Capaletti. Capaletti. C-A-P-P-E-L-L-E-T-T-I. Capaletti. That is correct. Great job. We have speller number 44. Yeah. 44. Hi. Your word is menial. Uh, can you repeat the word, please? Menial. Uh, can I have the definition, please? Sure. Menial means relating to the shin or shin bone. Um, can I have all the other information, please? Yes, okay. Menial is the only pronunciation. It's an adjective. It's from Greek. It means relating to the shin or shin bone. And the sentence is, David suffered a nemial injury while playing soccer. Nemial. Nemial. C-N-E-M-I-A-L. Nemial. Good job. That is correct. Our next speller is speller number 59. Hello. 
Okay. Uh, can you, can't quite see you. Uh, can you see something again? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I don't know why, but I can't see it. So other judges just watching for me. The word is bravura. Can you please repeat the word? Bravura. Can you please say all the information? Yes. The word can be pronounced bravura, 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 bravura. Yeah, there are a lot. Okay. It's a noun. It's from Italian. It means a show of daring or brilliancy. And the sentence is, she executed the dive with flawless technical precision and her own unique bravura. Bravura. Uh, can you repeat the definition, please? Bravura means a show of daring or brilliancy. Um, bravura. B R A V U R A. Bravura. That is correct. Great job. We have 61 next. Hello? Hello? Hello. Okay. Your word is kielbasa. Kielbasa. Can I have the definition? Kielbasa means an uncooked smoked sausage. Kielbasa. Can I have the origin? Kielbasa is from Polish. Kielbasa, um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Yes, there is kielbasa, 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 and kielbasa. Okay, kielbasa. K-I-E-L-B-A-S-A, -E kielbasa. Perfect, that is correct, good job. We have number 74 next. Hi. Uh, can you please put your hands in the frame? Your word is erythrocin. Can you repeat that? Erythromycin. Can you give me all the information? Sure. Erythromycin is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It comes from two parts. The first is Greek and the second part is from international scientific vocabulary. It means an antibiotic used in the treatment of infections caused by gram-positive bacteria. And the sentence is, the most frequently used topical antibiotics are clindamycin and erythromycin. Can you repeat the word? Yes, erythromycin. Erythromycin. E R Y T H R O M Y C I N. That is correct. Good job. We have speller number 77 next. Okay. Your word is ballot. It's a homonym, so I'm going to give you um, all the information. Ballot is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from Italian. It means a system of voting secretly and in writing on a particular issue. The sentence is, the regional secretary was elected by ballot. Ballot. <laughs> B-A-L-L-O-T, ballot. That is correct. Good job. Next up, we have number 79. Huh? Okay. Your word is azalea. Azalea. What is the language of origin? Azalea is from New Latin. Azalea, what is the definition? Azalea means a genus of shrubs or trees with deciduous leaves and funnel-shaped flowers, now usually considered a subgenus of rhododendron. Azalea. A-Z-A-L-E-A. 
E A Azalea. That is correct. Great job. Uh, our next speller is speller number eighty. Hello. Okay, your word is. Wait, can you repeat okay. the word? I got it. Uh, your word is scandus. I'm sorry, it's cut out. From you good? Okay, cool. Uh, what's okay. the link? Oh, wait, um, sorry, I got kicked out of the meeting for some weird reason, so um, I'll just go ahead and say the word for you again. The word is scondus. Oh, mm -hmm. language word. Scondus is from Sanskrit. Okay, uh, can you give me the rest of the information? Uh, you want all of it? Yeah. Skandas is the only pronunciation. It's a plural noun. It's from Sanskrit. And it means the five categories or, of, or attributes which together constitute the personality and experience of an individual. The five skandhas are, in short, a, por a portrait of the human self. Skandas. Skandas. S K A N D H A S. Skandas. Perfect. That is correct. Great job. Next up, we have number 81. Hello. Hello. Your word is bisonosis. Can I have all the information? Yeah, bisonosis is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from New Latin, and it means a lung disease caused by prolonged inhalation of textile fiber dust. Some investigators have found evidence of bisonosis among jute mill workers. Bisonosis. B I N I N O S I S. Bisonosis. Great try. The correct spelling is B Y S S I N O S I S. You did amazing. Good job. Our next speller is speller number 95. Hello. So your word is beryllium. Could you repeat that? Beryllium. Could I have the definition? Beryllium means a steel gray metallic element having high electric conductivity and high permeability to x-rays. Okay, um, B-E-R-Y-L-L-I-U-M. Perfect, that is correct, great job. Our next speller is speller number 102. Okay, your word is Fugus. Um, may I have all of the information? Fugus is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from French, and it means a composer of a contrapuntal musical composition whose basic structure consists of a theme or theme state successively in different voices. The sentence is, Bach was a better fugist than Beethoven. Great try, but the correct spelling is F-U-G-U-I-S-T. Great job. Our next speller is speller number 114. Hello. Hello. Your word is annoyance. Can you please repeat the word? Annoyance. Well, may I please have all the information? Okay, the word can be pronounced annoyance or annoyance, subtle difference. It's a noun, it's from Middle English, and it means the feeling or state of being irritated, vexation, nuisance. It appears that I'm not alone in my annoyance at not being able to vote in Trinidad. Can you please repeat the word? 
Annoyance. Annoyance. A N N O Y A N C E. Annoyance. That is correct. Good job. Our next speller is speller 120. Hi there. Your word is coffle. Can you please repeat the word? Coffle. May I please have all the information? Yes. It can be pronounced coffle or coffle. It's a noun. It's from Arabic and it means a gang of men or a train of animals fastened together. The sentence is, the men on the coffle planned an uprising together and freed themselves. May I please have the pronunciations again? Can you pronounce coffle or coffle? And you said this comes from Arabic, right? Yes. Coffle. C O F F A L. Coffle. I'm sorry. The correct spelling is C O F F L E. Great try. Our next speller is speller number 124. Hello. Hi, um, can we see your hands in the frame, please? Okay, your word is facetious. Facetious, can I have all the information, please? Sure, facetious is the only pronunciation. It's an adjective, it's, a, it's from Latin and it means Characterized by pleasantry or levity, stimulating laughter. The sentence is, at the risk of sounding facetious, I have to say who really cares about spelling bees. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, facetious. And can you please repeat the part of speech? Facetious is an adjective. Okay. Facetious. F A C E T I O U S. Facetious. That is correct. Good job. Thank you. Our next speller is speller 131. Hi. Your word is Cassolet. Cassolet, may I please have all the information? Cassoulet is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from French, and it means a white bean stew of French origin, often containing pork, mutton, garlic, sausage, and preserved goose or duck. The sentence is, Diana had a cassoulet that is smoky and messy, but very tasty. Cassoulet. Are there any ultra pronunciations? Just the one. Cassoulet. Cassoulet. Am I saying the word correctly? <laughs> Yeah, sounds right. Cassoulet. C-A-S-S-O-U-L-E-T. Cassoulet. Perfect. That is correct. Great job. Our next speller is speller number 136. Oh, can you say something? I'm um, here. Okay. Your word is Daphnean. Daphnean? Yes, Daphnean. Can I have the origin, please? Daphnean comes from two parts. The first part is Latin from Greek, and the second part is English. Daphnean, uh, are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, Daphnean. Uh, could you repeat the language of origin? The first part of Daphnean is Latin from Greek, and the second part is English. Daphnean. D A P H N E A N. Daphnean. That is correct. Great job. 
Our next speller is speller 141. Hi. Your word is debenture. Can you please repeat the word? Debenture. Debenture. Can I have all the information, please? Sure. The word can be pronounced debenture or debenture. It's a noun. It's from Middle English, and it means a type of loan often used by companies to raise money that is paid back over a long period of time and at a fixed rate of interest. Sentences, when a company signs a debenture, it is benefiting to get a loan, but it's under obligation to pay it back with interest. Debenture. Can I have the part of speech again, please? Debenture is a noun. Debenture. D E B E N T U R E. Debenture. Perfect. That is correct. Great job. Our next speller is speller number 158. Hi. Your word is Kamora. Kamora. Can I have all the information, please? The word can be pronounced Kamora or Kamara. It's a noun. It's from Italian. And it means a group of persons united for dishonest or dishonorable ends. The sentence is, police arrested members of the Kamora who are responsible for most of the recent crimes in the neighborhood. Kamora. Can I have all the alternate pronunciations, please? Sure. There is Kamora and Kamara. Can you repeat all the information again, please? Sure. The word is can be pronounced Kamora or Kamara. It's a noun. It's from Italian. And it means a group of persons united for dishonest or dishonorable ends. And the sentence is, Police arrested members of the Camorra who are responsible for most of the recent crimes in the neighborhood. Camorra. Camorra. Can you repeat the definition one more time? Camorra means a group of persons united for dishonest or dishonorable ends. Camorra. Is this is Italian? Yes. Okay. Camorra. C A M O R R A Kamora. That is correct. Great job. Thank you. Next up, we have number one fifty nine. Hello. Your word is arboreal. Can you repeat that, please? Arboreal. Arboreal. May I have the definition, please? Arboreal means inhabiting or frequenting trees. May I have the language of origin, please? Arboreal comes from two parts. The first part is Latin and the second part is English. Arboreal. A R B O R E A L. Arboreal. Perfect. That is correct. Great job. Next up, we have number 162. Hi. Your word is, your word is sour rotten. Sour rotten. I'm sorry, um, it cut out. Can you say that again? Sour rotten. Yes, that sounds right. Can you give me the language? Can you give me all the information? It can be pronounced sour broughton, sour broughton, or sour broughton. It's a noun. It's from German, and it means oven roasted or pot roasted beef marinated in a vinegar solution with peppercorns, garlic, onions, and bay leaves before cooking. The traditional German restaurants serve bratwurst, sour broughton, and large quantities of beer. Can you give me the part of speech again? Sure. Sour rotten is a noun. Okay, sour rotten. Is there any alternative pronunciations? Yes. 
there is Sauerbraten, 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 and Sauerbraten. Sauerbraten? Sauerbraten? Yes, that's not good. S-A-U-E-R-B-R-A-T-E. On the end, cut off when you can someone verify that it was good. It sounded correct to me. Okay, that is correct then. Uh, our next speller is speller number 163. Hello? Your word is sad. Um, can I have all the information? The word can be pronounced sav, 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 sav. Very subtle differences. It's a noun. It's from Middle English, and it means a healing ointment. The sentence is, George's grandfather prepared a mustard oil salve and told him that if he used it, his wounds would, would, would disappear in two days. Salve. S-A-L-V-E. Salve. Sal that is correct. Great job. Next up, we have number 166. Hi. Your word is Diefenbachia. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, Diefenbachia. Diefenbachia. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes. Diefenbachia. Can I have the definition, please? Diefenbachia means a small genus of tropical American erect plants with long sheathing or clasping petioles and united stamens. Diefenbachia. Can I have all the information? Sure. Diefenbachia is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from New Latin. And it means a small genus of tropical American erect plants with long sheathing or clasping petioles and united stamens. Sentences, the Diefenbachia is an ornamental plant that is used fundamentally like an indoor plant. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, Diefenbachia. Diefenbachia. D, I, E, F, F, E, N, B, A, C, H I A Diefenbachia. Great job, that is correct. That was a hard word. Good job. Our next speller and last speller of the round is speller number 170. Hi. Hello. Your word is Kench. Kench. May I please have all the information? Kench is the only pronunciation, it's a noun. It's from unknown origin, the origin is unknown. And it means a bin used for salting and preserving fish. The sentence is, in rainy weather, the fish may be left in the kench pile for longer periods. Kench, am I saying it correctly? Yes. Kench, K-E-N-C-H, kench. Perfect. That is correct. Great job. And that marks the end of round one. Good job, Spurs. All right. All right. Um, if everyone is back, we will go ahead and get started with round two. Um, I don't say Smritika on the secondary device. Rohan, if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started with Speller 27. Okay. Uh, can Speller um, 24 wait, um, say um, something so I can see you? Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, okay. Your is Chasable. Can you repeat that? You're like, 
internet is like unstable over here. Okay, the word is chasm. Can you hear me now? Did you clear? Chasmal? Chasm. No, 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 wait. Chasmal. Chasmal? Yes. Can I have all the information, please? Yes. The word can be pronounced chasmal, chasmal, chasmal. It's a noun. It's from French, and it means an outer ecclesiastical garment in the form of a sleeveless cloak or mantle that slips over the wearer's head but remains open at the sides. And the sentence is, a chasuble from 1800 is preserved in the church's collection. Chasuble? Um, I'll give you all the pronunciations again, because um, um, I can't quite hear what you're saying clearly. I don't want to mislead you. Okay, your word is chasuble, chasuble, or chasuble. All of those are valid pronunciations. Chasuble. C yeah, that's right. A S C I B L E. Chasuble. Great try. My correct spelling is C H A S U B L E. Congrats on making it so far. You did amazing. Yeah. Our next speller is speller number 29. Hello? Okay. Your word is knockalite. Can you please give me the definition? Knockalite means a mineral consisting of natural sodium bicarbonate. Can you please give me the language of origin? Knockalite comes from two parts. The first part is from the shortening of another word, and the second part is English. Can you please repeat the word? Knockalite. Knockalite. N O C C O L I T E. Knockalite. So close. The correct spelling is N A H C O L I T E. Great guess. Thank you. Our next speller is speller number 39. Hello, um, I can't see or hear you. Are you saying anything? Srinidhi, can you unmute yourself? Oh, okay. I'm here now. Okay. I'll give you the word again. Word is viaticum. Viaticum. Could you repeat the word? Uh, could you repeat the word? I think you're frozen. Um, okay, I'll take over for a second. The word, okay. Um, could you repeat the word? The word is viaticum. Oh, viatic. Yeah. Can I get the definition, please? An allowance as of transportation or supplies and money for traveling expenses. Viat. Can I get the language word, and please? Latin. Viatic. Um, can I get the um, please? Sorry, I uh, Rohan, I got this word. Um, sorry, Rodriguez? Um, okay, um, I can't quite hear you, and so could you try checking your internet or something like that to see if it's better? Oh, um, I, did you ask for the language of origin? I think that's what I heard, right? So I'll give you, you know, I'll give you all the information. If you and I don't need a sentence. Except, look, can I get the part of speech, please? It's a noun. Viaticum. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, viaticum, viaticum. Viaticum. Could you repeat the word? 
Viaticum, viaticum. Viaticum. V I A T I C U M. Viaticum. That's correct. Great job. Thank you. Uh, yes. Next up, we have spelling number 44. Hi. Your word is Jalolino. Uh, can you repeat the word, please? Jalolino. Um, can I have all the information, please? Sure. The word is Jalolino. It's a noun. It's from Italian. It means any of various yellow pigments. And the sentence is, Rita used Jalolino to paint a portrait. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, Jalolino. Okay. Um, can you repeat the language of origin, please? Sure. Um, the word is from Italian. Okay. Jalolino. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yes. Okay. Um, can you repeat the word one more time, please? Jalolino. Jalolino. G I A L L O L I N O. Jalolino. Perfect. Great job. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Our next speller is speller number 59. Um, can you hear me? Your word is Okay, um your word is nutria. Can you please say all of the um information? Sure. The word can be pronounced nutria or nutria. It's a noun, it's from Latin, and it means a South American aquatic rodent with webbed feet. The sentence is, the zoo included nutria species in one of the exhibits. Um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Yeah, there's nutria and nutria. Um, N-E-U-T-R-I-A. So close. One letter off. N-U-T-R-I-A. Great try. Thank Great you. job on making it so far. You did so good. Our next speller is speller number 61. Hello. Your word is Grandrel. Grandrel, can I have the definition? Grandrel means a two ply yarn made by twisting together two singles of contrasting color. Wait, can you repeat the definition? Yeah, Grandrel means a two ply yarn made by twisting together two singles of contrasting color. Okay, can I have the language of origin? Grandrel is from unknown origin, or its origin is unknown. Grandrel. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, Grandrel. Can I have the part of speech? Grandrel is a noun. Grandrel. Um, does it have the French diminutive suffix L? Oh, uh, you're on the right track. Yes, it does. Sorry. Grandrel. G R A N D R E L L E. Grandrel. That is correct. Perfect. Our yeah. next speller is speller number 74. Hi. Well, your word is eratology. Can you give me all the information? Um, if yep. any other spellers.
The only pronunciation. Uh, spellers, if uh, make sure to only unmute yourself when you're spelling your word. I can't hear. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and say the word for um, the speller. Okay. Your word is erotology. Can you give me all the information? Sure. Erotology is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from Greek, and it means a narrative of the miraculous deeds of a god or hero. Sentences, an erotology was recited in the ancient temples of Isis. Erotology. A-E-R-I-E-O-L. No, it was L-E-Y. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is A-R-E-T-A-L-O-G-Y. Great try. Our next speller is speller number 77. Your word is Trapino. Trapino. Uh, can I have all the information, please? Sure. Chapino is the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from Italian and means a dish of fish and shellfish. The sentence is Amelia prepared Chapino for dinner. Uh, Chapino. C. But can I start all over? Okay. Uh, Chapino. C. Wait, um, it's, it's Italian, right? Yes. Um, C I O P P I N O, Chapino. Perfect. That's correct. Good job. Next up, we have number 79. Hello. Uh, your word is nocive. Nocive. What is the definition? Nocive means harmful or injurious. What is the language of origin? Nosive is from Middle French. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one nosive. Okay. Nosive. N O C I V E. Nosive. Perfect. Great job. That is correct. Our next speller is speller number E. Your word is mephitic. Mephitic. Can you repeat the word? Mephitic. Can I have all the information? Sure. The only pronunciation is mephitic. It's an adjective. It comes from either French or late Latin. We don't know which one. It means offensive smelling, harmful, or poisonous, and it means the homeless man was responsible for the mephitic air on the plane. Mephitic. M-E-P-H-I-T-I-C. Mephitic. That's great. Great job. Next up, we have number 95. Ooh. Your word is Naki. Did I have all the information? Sure. It's pronounced Naki or Naki. It's a plural noun. It's from Italian and it means dumplings of a pasta often made with cheese or rice potato and served with a sauce. The sentence is, Sia always enjoyed the gnocchi her mother made. G N O C C H I. Perfect. Great job. Uh, that is correct. Our next speller is speller number one fourteen. Hello. Hello. 
your word is exchequer. Can you please repeat the word? Hello? Can somebody hear me? Um, could we see your hands in the screen, please? Hands, can you please repeat the word? Yeah, the word is exchequer. Exchequer? Yes. Um, may I please have all the information? Sure. The word can be pronounced exchequer, exchequer, exchequer. It's a noun, it's from Middle English, and it means a treasury as of a state or nation. The definition, oh, sorry, um, the sentence is, the fiscal responsibility lies with the chancellor of the exchequer. Exchequer. May I please have the part of speech? Exchequer is a noun. May I please have the definition? Sure. Exchequer means a treasury as of a state or nation. Exchequer. E X E H E C K E R. Exchequer. So close. The correct spelling is E X C H E Q U E R. Great try. Uh, next up, we have spelling number 124. Hello. Okay, your word is... What? Can you repeat the word? I can't, I couldn't hear it. Okay. Huh? Oh, okay, um, I actually didn't say the word. The word is guiche. Guiche? Guiche, can I please have the, um... Yeah. Mission? Yes. Guiche means a window where tickets are sold more broadly and opening with the grill. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one guiche. Guiche? Yes, guiche. Can you please repeat all of the information? Sure. The word, the only pronunciation is guiche. It's a noun, it's from French, and it means a window where tickets are sold more broadly and opening with the grill. And the sentence is, Brett asked for two tickets at the guiche of the theater. Guiche? Yes, guiche. Can I please have the definition one more time? Sure. Guiche means a window where tickets are sold more broadly and opening with the grill. Guiche? Yes, guiche. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes. Guiche. G U I C H E. Can I please start over? Uh, you have 30 seconds left. Okay, Guiche. G U I C H E T Guiche. Perfect. Oh, Next thank next. you. Yes, good job. Next up, we have speller number 131. Hi. Hi. Your word is, is Ponji. Ponji, may I please have all the information? Hello? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I heard you. You want all the information, right? Okay. The only pronunciation is Ponji. It's a noun. It's from Chinese, and it means a thin, soft clothing and curtain fabric of Chinese origin 
Woven from uneven threads of raw silk and possessing a characteristic acre or tan color. The interns working in the hospital had a unique uniform of naturally colored Ponji. Ponji, are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, Ponji. Ponji, am I saying the word correctly? Yes. Ponji. Ponji. P O N G E E. Ponji. Perfect. That's correct. Great job. Uh, next up, we have number 136. Okay. Your word is Gabro. Gabro, may I have the origin, please? Gabro's from Italian. Uh, definition? Gabro means a rock of a family of granular igneous rocks. Gabro, uh, are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, Gabro. Uh, part of speech, please. Gabro is a noun. Gabro. G A B B R O. Gabro. Perfect. Good job. Next up, we have speller number 141. Hi. Hi. Your word is flops. Can you please repeat that? Flocks. Flocks? Flocks. Flocks. Sorry, wait, I, I don't think you're saying it correctly. Flocks. Flocks? Flocks. No, no, no. Flocks. Flocks. Okay. Can I have the definition, please? Yes. Phlox means any plant of a genus of American herbs having red, purple, white, or variegated flowers. Can I have the part of speech, please? Phlox is a noun. Can I have it in the sentence, please? Sure. Phlox plant is widely grown as an alpine or border plant. Can I have the language of origin, please? Yes, the word is from you what? Flux. P H L O X. Flux. Perfect. Good job. Next up, we have number 158. Hello. Okay. Um, your word is Zvengali. Zvengali? Zvengali. Can I have all the information, please? Zvengali is a noun. It's from a British literary name. It means one who attempts usually with evil intentions to persuade or force another to do his bidding. The sentence is the business partnership went sour when the investor was revealed to be a Zvengali. Okay, um, I think I forgot to give you all pronunciation, so let me get that now. It can be pronounced Svengali, 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 or Svengali. Svengali. Is this like Hindi or Sanskrit or Urdu Persian? It comes from a British literary name. Uh, can you repeat all the information one more time? Sure. The word can be pronounced Svengali, Svengali. Svengali or Svengali. It's a noun. It's from British literary name and it means one who attempts, usually with evil intentions, to persuade or force another to do his bidding. The sentence is the business partnership went sour when the investor was revealed to be a Svengali. Svengali. S. Can I start over? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Svengali. S V E N G 
A L I. Zvengali. Perfect. Great job. That's correct. Next up, we have number 159. Hello. Hello. Your word is teledu. Teledu. May I have all the information, please? Sure. The only pronunciation is teledu. It's a noun. It's from Malay, and it means a small carnivorous mammal of the mountains of Java and Sumatra, resembling the badger and like the skunk secreting an offensive fluid. The sentence is, the teledu found during the hike in the mountains had a blackish coat and white forehead. Teledu. Can you repeat the, um, can you repeat the language of origin, please? Teledu is from Malay. Okay. Teledu. Uh -huh. Teledu. T E L E D U. Teledu. That is correct. Thank you. Good job. We have number 162 next. Hello. Hello. Uh, your word is verism. Can you say it again? Can you say that again? Verism. Is there any alternative pronunciation? Yes, there is verism and verism. Can you give me all the information? Sure. I hear you pronounce verism or verism. It's a noun. It's from Italian and it means using contemporary theme in opera rather than using a mythical theme. The sentence is scholars debate the origins of verism at a recent conference. Verism? Verism? Yes. Wait, wait. Verism. 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 Yeah, that sounds right. Can you give me the part of speech again? Sure. Verism is a noun. Can you pronounce it again? Verism. Verism. We e r i s m. Um, that broke up for me. Can someone else confirm? I heard a correct spelling. Okay. What? Then that's correct. <laughs> Yeah, um, so cool. Yeah. Um, so that's correct. And next up, we have number 163. Hello? Hello. Your word is yardong. Uh, can I have, uh, are there any other pronunciations? There's just yardong. Yardong? Yardong. Yardong? Yeah, that sounds right. Yardong. Can I have the other information? Yes. The word is pronounced Yardong. It's a noun. It's from Turkish and it means a sharp crested ridge carved by wind erosion. The sentence is Harry stumbled upon a Yardong. Yardong. Y A R D O N G Yardong. One letter off. So close. Y A R D A N G. Great try. Next up, we have speller number 166. Hi. Hi. Your word is Darnold. Darnel, am I pronouncing it correctly? That sounds right. Darnel, can I have the definition? Darnel means any of several grasses of the genus Lolium that grow as weeds in grain fields in Europe and Asia. Darnel, can I have the language of origin? 
Darnell is from Middle English. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is Darnell and Darnell, a subtle difference. Okay. And um, am I pronouncing it correctly? Darnell? Yeah. Um, can you give me all the information? Sure. The word is pronounced Darnell or Darnell. It's a noun. It's from Middle English and means any of several grasses of the genus Lolium that grow as weeds and grain fields in Europe and Asia. The sentence is, Cindy was shocked to see Darnell growing in the far end of her garden. Darnell. D A R N O L, Darnell. A letter off. D A R N E L. Oh, great try. Congrats on making it so far. You did really good. Next up, we have uh, the last speller of the round, speller number 170. Hi. Your word is serrated. Um, could you please repeat the word? Did you ask me to repeat the word? The word is serrated. Serrated? Yes. Um, can I please have all, all, all the information? Sure. The word is pronounced serrated. That's the only pronunciation. It's a verb. It's from late Latin and it means notched or toothed on the edge. The sentence is the botany lecture warned us to be careful with the serrated leaves. Actually, never mind. The part of speaking in this case is not a verb, it's an adjective. Um, am I saying it correctly? Serrated? I'm sorry, what did you say? I couldn't quite hear that. Um, am I saying it correctly? Serrated? And it's serrated. Serrated. Um, could I please have the part of speech again? Adjective. Adjective. Um, what's the definition again? It means notched or toothed on the edge. And serrated. And three seconds now, so go ahead and start spelling whenever you're ready. Serrated. S E R R A T E D. Serrated. That's correct. Great job. Thank you. And with that, we are end with we are done with round two. Great job, guys. All right. Um, are all of the judges back? Yeah, Sylvie Rohan, perfect. Okay. Um, thank you guys, all the spellers, for your patience. We should be good now. So, um, yes. Okay, speller 39. Um, just say something if you're ready, and then we can go ahead and start round three. Hello. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, I can. Yeah. Now. Okay. So your word is knockerel. Knockerel. Can I get the definition, please? Sure. Knockerel means a rich light dumpling. Knockerel. Um, can I get the language of origin, please? Knockerel is from German. Knockerel. Um, can I get the part of speech, please? Sure. Knockerel is a noun. Knockerel. Could you repeat the definition? 
Knockerl means a rich, light dumpling. Knockerl. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is knockerl and knockerl. Knockerl. Could you repeat the word, please? Yeah, knockerl. Knockerl. N O C K E R L. Knockerl. That is correct. Good job. Thank Next you. Have... Good job. Next up, we have 44. Hi. Hi. Your word is gagaku. Uh, can you repeat the word, please? Gagaku. Um, can I have the language of origin, please? Sure. Gagaku is from Japanese. Or, sorry, gagaku is from Japanese. Okay. Um, can I have all the information, please? Gogaku, that's the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from Japanese, and it means the ancient court music of Japan. The sentence is, Gogaku is played in Tokyo Imperial Play Palace since the 7th century. Okay. Um, and can you repeat the definition for me, please? Sure. Gogaku means the ancient court music of Japan. Okay. And there aren't any alternate pronunciations? Yeah, there's just gagaku. Okay, gagaku. Am I am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes. Okay. Uh, by the, can I see your hands in the frame? Oh yeah, sure. Um, gagaku. G a g a k u. Gagaku. That is correct. Thank you. Good job. We have number sixty-one next. Hello. Hello, your word is consigliere. Can you repeat the word? Consigliere. Motion detected at the courtyard gate. Consigliere? Yes. Consigliere. Um, can I have all the information? Sure. The word can be pronounced consigliere or consigliere. Wait, wait, actually, never mind. Wait. It's consigliere and consigliere. It's a noun. It's from Italian and it means a counselor or advisor. The sentence is Larry is one of my best friends as well as my trusted consigliere. Consigliere. Can I have the language of origin again? Yes. Consigliere is from Italian. Okay. Can you repeat the word? Yes, consigliere. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Yeah, there's consigliere and consigliere. Consigliere. You have 30 seconds left. Consigliere, C-O-N-S-I-G-L-I-E. R E conciliary. That is correct. Thank you. Good job. We have number seventy-seven next. Okay, your word is maquillage. Maquillage. Can I please have all the information? Sure. The word can be pronounced maquillage, 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 maquillage. It's a noun. It's from French. And it means makeup, cosmetics, and the sentence is, one shouldn't judge a book by its cover, nor a fashion designer by her maquillage. Maquillage. M? I'm sorry. Can I start all over? Yeah, sure. Okay. M-A-Q-U-I-L-L-A-G-E. That is correct. Good job. Next up, Hello. we have speller number 79. Hello. Your word is croconole. Um, what is the definition? Oh, we need to see both your hands in the frame. Oh, okay. Yeah, croconole means a method of curling hair. Are there any alternate pronunciations? 
There is croconol, croconol. Yeah, I believe those are the only one. What is the language of origin? Croconol or croconol comes from French. Croconol. C R O Q U I G N O L E. Croconol. Co croconol. That is correct. Next up, we have speller number 80. Hi. Your word is etouffee. This is a homonym, so I'm going to give you all the information. It's pronounced etouffee or etouffee. It's a noun. It's from Louisiana French, and it means a Cajun stew of shellfish or chicken served over rice. The sentence is uh, elegant and luscious. Crawfish etouffee is a Cajun classic. Etouffee. Etouffee. E T O U F F E E A to F A. That's correct. Good job. Next up, we have speller number 95. Your word is Conestoga. Can I have all the information? Sure. The only pronunciation is Conestoga, it's a noun, it's from an American geographical name. And it means a broad wheeled covered wagon used especially for transporting freight. The sentence is the Conestoga wagon was used extensively during the late 18th century in the eastern United States and Canada. Okay. Um, C O N E S T O G A. That's correct. Yeah. Next up, we have spelling number 124. Hello. Hello, your word is Wapongo. Wapongo, may I please have all of the information? Sure. Wapongo is the only pronunciation. It's a noun, it's from Mexican Spanish, and it means a fast and complicated Mexican couple dance that is usually performed on a wooden platform to accentuate the rhythmic beating of heels and toes. The sentence is, the Cinco de Mayo was celebrated with all kinds of dances, including Wapongo. Um. Can you please repeat the language of origin? Wapongo. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, Wapongo. Okay. Wapongo. Wapongo. H U A P A N G O. Wapongo. That is correct. Thank you. Next up, we have number 131. Hello. Uh, your word is Rokai. Rokai, may I please have all the information? Yeah, it can be pronounced Rokai or Rokai. It's a noun, it's from French, and it means a style of ornamentation developed in the 18th century and characterized by forms derived from the artificial rock work and pierced shell work of the period. The sentence is, the Rokai style was used particularly in sa salon, sorry, salons, saloons, I believe, to impress and entertain guests. Rokai, are there any alternate pronunciations? There's Rokai and Rokai. Rokai, am I saying the word correctly? That sounds right. Uh, can you be the language of origin again? Yeah, the word is from French. Rokai. R O C A I L L E. Rokai. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have 136. Your word is Kohenur. Kohenur, uh, definition, please. Kohenur means something that is best in class, a large and valuable diamond. Uh, is this an eponym? It's from Persian. Oh. Uh, can you repeat the word? Kohenur. Kohenur. Uh, can you repeat? Uh, can I have all the information again? Sure. It can be pronounced Kohenur or Kohenur. It's a noun. It's from Persian and it means something that is best in class, a large and valuable diamond. The Kohenur diamond is in British collection since 1849. 
of culinary. K O H I N O O R culinary. That is correct. Good job. Next up, we have speller number 141. Okay. Your word is Pileus or Pileus. It's a homonym, so I'm going to give you all the information. So it's pronounced Pileus or Pileus. It's a noun. It's from New Latin, and it means the cap of a mushroom or toadstool. And the sentence is, High CO2 levels in the atmosphere can repress growth of pileus in mushrooms. Pileus, can I have the, um, the part of speech? Yes, pileus is a noun. Pileus. P-I-L-E-U- S. Pileus. Great job. That's correct. Next up, we have speller number 158. Hello. Okay, your word is frison. Frison. Is this, um, can, uh, can you just um, tell me all the information? Sure. The word is pronounced frison. It's a noun. It's from French, and it means waste silk usually taken from the outside of the cocoon. The sentence is, the frison silk, which forms outside the cocoon, is too coarse to make any elegant dress. Can you repeat the definition, please? Yes. Frison means waste silk usually taken from the outside of the cocoon. Um, can you repeat all the information one more time? Yes. The word is frison. That's the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's from French. And it means waste silk usually taken from the outside of the cocoon. The sentence is, the frison silk, which forms outside the cocoon, is too coarse to make any elegant dress. Frison. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, frison. Frison. F R I S S O N Frison. One letter off. Correct spelling is F R I S O N. Thank you. Great try. You made it so far. Great job. Next up, we have number one fifty nine. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you put your hands a little bit more out? Okay. Your word is. Glyceraldehyde. Glyceraldehyde. May I have all the information, please? Yes. The word is pronounced glyceraldehyde. It's a noun. The first part is from international scientific vocabulary, and the second part is German. And it means a sweet, colorless, crystalline solid that is formed as an intermediate in carbohydrate metabolism by the breakdown of sugars. And the sentence is glyceraldehyde has now been chosen as a standard configuration in sugar chemistry. Glyceraldehyde. Can you can you repeat the language of origin, please? Sure. The first part is from international scientific vocabulary, and the second part is German. Glyceraldehyde. G. L. Y. C. E. R A L D E H Y D E glyceraldehyde. That is correct. Great job. Thank you. Next up we have number 162. Hi. Your word is onychorexis. Can you please repeat the word? Onychorexis. Does this mean disruptor of the nails? Somewhat close. It means longitudinal ridging and splitting of the finger and toenails. Does this have the root onic meaning nails? You're on the right track. Okay. Onychorexis? Am I pronouncing right? Onychorexis. Yes.
new pronunci is there any alternative pronunciations? There's just the one anachorexis. Anachorexis. Can you give me the origin? Sure. Anachorexis is from New Latin. Anachorexis. O N Y C H O R R H E X I S. Anachorexis. That is correct. Great job. Next up, we have speller number 170, last speller of around. Hi. Hi. Your word is. Oh, sorry. Ziphius. Ziphius. May I please have all the information? Ziphius is a noun. It's from New Latin, and it means a genus of large scomperoid fishes comprising the common swordfish. The sentence is some fish that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, such as Ziphius, may also may be high in mercury. Ziphius. Am I pronouncing it correctly? That sounds right. Ziphius. X I P H I A S. Ziphius. That is correct. Great job. And that marks the end of round three. All right, um, we are good to go get started with round four. So um, yeah, speller 39, uh, whenever you're ready, Rohan can give you your word. I'm ready now. Oh, I'm sorry, I was muted, okay. Your word is misokinia. Did you hear me clearly? Yeah. Okay. Did you ask for something? Misokinia. Yeah, that sounds right. Does that come from the root miso meaning hate? Yes. Uh, Does it come from the root kinia meaning movement? Meaning what? Movement. I don't see that here. Oh. Misokinia. Can I get the definition, please? Sure. Misokinia means an abnormal hatred of new ideas. Hmm. Misokinia. Can I get the language of origin, please? Yes, misokinia comes from New Latin. Misokinia, um, wait. Can I get the part of speech, please? Sure, misokinia is a noun. Misokinia, could you repeat the definition? Sure, it means an abnormal hatred of new ideas. Misokinia, um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Yeah, there is misokinia, 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 and misokinia. Misokinia. Could you repeat the word, please? Yes, misokinia. Misokinia. M I S O. K I N E I A, misokinia. So close. The correct spelling is M I S O C A I N E A. Great job. You did so good. You did really good. Yeah, you did a great job. Our next speller is speller number 44. Hi. Hi, okay, your word is conductieri. This has a near hum, so I need to write you all the information. It can be, it's pronounced conductieri, conductieri, or conductieri. It's plural noun, it's from Italian, and it means a leader of a band of mercenary professional soldiers, common in Europe from the 14th to the 16th centuries. And the sentence is conductieri who were in command of mercenary companies served European monarchs and popes during the Italian war. Uh, can you repeat the word, please? 
Yes. Conda Thierry. Okay. Um, can I have the definition again, please? Yes. A leader of a band of mercenary professional soldiers common in Europe from the 14th to the 16th centuries. Okay. Um, can I have the language of origin again, please? Yes. Conda Thierry is from Italian. And um, are there any alternate pronunciations? There is condottieri, condottieri, and condottieri. Condottieri, am I pronouncing that correctly? Uh, it's condottieri. Condottieri? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Um, can you repeat all the information for me, please? Uh, can you put your hands back up in the frame? Yeah. yeah. Um, the word is pronounced condottieri, condottieri, condottieri. It's a plural noun. It's from Italian, and it means a leader of a band of mercenary professional soldiers common in Europe from the 14th to the 16th century. And the sentence is condottieri, who were in command of mercenary companies, served European monarchs and popes during the Italian wars. Condottieri. C O N D O. T T I E R E condottieri. So close one letter off. C O N D O T T I E R I. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you did great. Great job. Next up, we have number sixty-one. Hello. Okay, your word is can a tea. Can a tea. Yeah. Can I have the definition. Can of tea means a fine gold or silver thread twisted spirally that is used in embroidery and often made into lace for vestments or into military braid. Can you repeat the word? Can of tea. Can I have the language of origin? Yeah, can of tea is from French. Are there any alternate pronunciations? There is can of tea. Canateal and canate. Okay. Wait, can you repeat the alternate pronunciations? Yes, there is canate, canateal, and canate. Okay. Canate. C A N E T I L. L E can a T. Perfect. Good job. Next up we have spelling number 77. Oh, my bad. Sorry, that's actually incorrect. C A N N E T I L L E. Sorry. Wait, it Wait. does it have a double double N. It does have a double N. Thank you. Great job. Um, just uh, wanted to add, sorry, spellers, if you've misspelled so far in this round, uh, just stay on the Zoom call. We might might get you back, just to, you know, uh, but for now, just stay on the Zoom call. We'll let you know um, when to leave. Cool. 77. Okay, your word is hyperlepterine. Hyperlepterine? Yeah. Uh, can I have all the information? Yeah, the word is pronounced hyperlepterine or hyperlepterine. It's not a difference. It's an adjective. The first part is Middle English and the second part is French. And it means having a very long, narrow nose with a nasal index of 40 to 55. And the sentence is the actor undergone plastic surgery to remedy his hyperlepterine condition. Uh, can you repeat the word again? Hyperlepterine. Uh, does it come from the Greek rhine meaning nose? Yes. Okay, hyperlepterine, H Y P E R L E P T O R R H I N E. Hyperlepterine. Yep, good job. Next up, we have number 79. Hello. I, oh, can we see your other hand in the end? Yeah. Okay, your word is grace. It's a homonym, so I'm going to give you all the information. The only pronunciation is grace. It's a noun. It's from French, and it means a disease of white wines and cider caused by a deficiency of tannin and the action of certain anaerobic bacteria. 
sentence, okay, the sentence is, the grace destroyed most of the crops in French vineyards. Grace. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, grace. Grace. G R E I C E. Grace. Great try. Well, the correct spelling is G R A I S S E. Great job. You did so good. You did so good. Next up, we have speller number 80. Okay, your word is buzuki. Buzuki, is this French? Uh, no, it's from New Greek. All right, can I have all the information? Yes, it's pronounced buzuki or buzuki. It's a noun, it's from New Greek, and it means a long necked stringed musical instrument of Greek origin. The sentence is Alexandris's buzuki was ornately and beautifully decorated. Wait, are there any alternate pronunciations? Yeah, there's buzuki and buzuki. Am I saying it correctly? Buzuki? Yes. Okay, buzuki. B O U Z O U K I, buzuki. That's correct. Good job. Next, we have number 95. Okay, your word is aeronoblastoma. Could I have all the information? Sure. The word is pronounced aeronoblastoma or arenoblastoma. It's a noun, it's from New Latin, and it means a tumor of the ovary that releases the male hormone testosterone. And the sentence is Becky was diagnosed with aeronoblastoma. A R E N a B L A S T O M A. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is A R R H E N O B L A S T O M A. Great okay. try. You did so good. Next up, we have speller number 124. Hello. Hello. Your word is synecdrin. What? Can you Synec repeat the word? Yeah, sure. Synecdrin. Synecdrin? No, not quite. Synecdrin. Synecdrin? Yeah. Um, can I please have the definition? Yes. Synecdrin means an insect living as an unwelcome guest among other insects. Synecdrin? Okay, wait. I think you're missing a little bit at the end. Synecdrin. Synecdrin? Synecdrin. Synecdrin. That's a little bit better. Synecdrin. Um, does this come from in meaning a neutral chemical compound? No, it does not. Uh, Nithika, can you can you repeat the word? Synecdrin. 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 Yes. Synecdrin. Does this come from sin meaning together? Uh, what language? Greek. you ask that again? I'm sorry. Does this, come, does this come from Greek sin meaning together? You're on the right track. Okay, let's your hands here. Oh, sorry. Synecdrin. Uh, you have 30 seconds. Synecdrin. Can I please have the part of speech? Synecdrin is a noun. Synecdrin. S Y N E C T 
H R I N Synecthron. So close. S Y N E C H T H R A N. Great try. Yes. Thank you. Next up, we have 131. Hi. Hi. Your word is Hatairai. Hatairai? May I please have all the information? Yes. Hatairai is a plural noun. It's from Greek, and it means one of a class of highly cultivated courtesans in ancient Greece. The sentence is, the Hatairai of Athens were known for their outstanding physical beauty and cultural accomplishments. Hatairai, um, are there any alternate pronunciations? Just the one, Hatairai. Um, okay, can you repeat all the information again? Yes. The word is pronounced Hatairai. That's the only pronunciation. It's a plural noun. It's from Greek, and it means one of a class of highly cultivated courtesans in ancient Greece. The sentence is, the Hatairai of Athens were known for their outstanding physical beauty and cultural accomplishments. Um, does this have the Greek pluralizer I? I don't see that here. Actually, yes, it does. Sorry. Um, okay. Can you please repeat the definition? Yes. Hatairai means one of a class of highly cultivated courtesans in ancient Greece. Wait, one of class of highly classified what? Highly cultivated courtesans in ancient Greece. Um, okay, can you please repeat the word one more time? Hatairai. Hatairai, am I saying the word correctly? Yes, that sounds right. You're at 25 seconds. Hatairai. H-E-T-A-I-R-A-I. -A -A Hatairai. Perfect. Good job. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have number 136. Okay, your word is aphipia. This is a homonym, so I'm gonna provide you all the information. It's pronounced aphipia or ephipia. It's a, it's a plural noun. It's from New Latin, and it means a thick shell consisting of two chitinous plates that encloses and protects the winter eggs of a cladoceran. The sentence is the aphipia are the only means for a Daphnia population to survive until favorable conditions. Uh, aphipia, can you repeat the language of origin? Yes. Aphipia is from New Latin. Aphipia, uh, can you repeat all the information? Yes, it's pronounced aphipia or ephipia. It's a plural noun. It's from New Latin and it means a thick shell consisting of two chitinous plates that encloses and protects the winter eggs of a cladoceran. And the sentence is, the aphibia are the only means for a Daphnia population to survive until favorable conditions. Aphibia. E-F-F-I-P-E-A, aphibia. Great guess. But the correct spelling is E-P-H-I-P-P-I-A. Great try. Next up, we have speller number 141. Hi. Okay, your word is balik. Balik? Yes. Can I have all the information, please? Yes. The word is pronounced balik. That's the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It's a trademark. And it means a kind of thin, fragile porcelain with a lustrous glaze used for making vases. The sentence is the balik pottery is on display at the Royal Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Can I have the language of origin again? Yeah, um, it's a trademark or it's from a trademark. Balik. Can I have the definition again, please? Yes, a kind of thin, fragile porcelain with a lustrous glaze used for making vases. Balik. B A L E E K, Balik. 
So close. B E L L E E K. Bleak. Great try. You did so good. Congrats on making it this far. Next up, we have speller number 159. Hi. Oh, keep your hands up. Yeah, okay. Your word is bluffer and glottis. Can you repeat that, please? Bluffer and glottis. Bluffer and glottis? Yes. Okay. May I have all the information, please? Yes. Blepharoglottis is a noun. It can be pronounced blepharoglottis or blepharoglottis, subtle difference. It's from New Latin and it means a very large genus of somewhat glabrous orchids, chiefly of the northern hemisphere. The sentence is, the blepharoglottis blooms in July and grows in wetlands in the Adirondack Mountains and other parts of New York State. Can you repeat the pronunciations again? Yes. There's blepharoglottis and blepharoglottis, subtle difference. Okay. Can you repeat the language of origin, please? Yes. It comes from New Latin. Okay. Blepharoglottis. Can you repeat the word one more time, please? Blepharoglottis. Wait, is it blepharoglottis or blepharoglottis? Blepharoglottis. Okay, thank you. Blepharoglottis. B L E P H E R O G L O T T U S, Blepharoglottis. Super close. B L E P H A R I G L O T T I S. Okay, thank you. Great try. Guys, these words are really hard, so I'm proud of all of you. You guys are doing great. Next up, we have speller number 162. Hi. Hi. Your word is. Dibucane. Can you say the word again? Dibucane. Dibucane? Yes. Does this have the root di meaning two? Uh, from what language? Uh, can you give me the, um, the definition? Sure. Dibucane means a compound used as a local and spinal anesthetic. Can you repeat the definition? Yeah, it's a compound used as a local and spinal anesthetic. Can you give me all the um, information? Yes. The word is pronounced dibucane and that's the only pronunciation. It's a noun. It comes from three parts. The first is from Middle English, the second is from International Scientific Vocabulary, and the third is from German. It means a compound uses a local and spinal anesthetic. And the, sen the sentence is, Dibucane is used to relieve pain and itching caused by conditions such as sunburn, insect stings, poison ivy, or minor scratches. Can you repeat the sentence? Yes. Dibucane is used to relieve pain and itching caused by conditions such as sunburn, insect stings, poison ivy, or minor scratches. Can you give me the alternative pronunciations? There's just one, Dibucane. You have 30 seconds. Dibucane. D-I-B-U-C-A-I-N-E. Dibucane. That is correct. Next up, we have speller number 170. Okay, your word is gaitanogamy. Um. 
Can you please repeat the word? Gaitanogamy. Gaitanogamy. Yes. Um, could you please have all the information? Yes, Gaitanogamy is the only pronunciation. It's a noun, it's from international scientific vocabulary. And it means the pollination of one flower by another growing on the same plant. And the sentence is corn, maize, and banana are common examples of the Gaitanogamy. Gaitanogamy? Yes. Um, G? Um, could I please have the definition again? Yes. Gaitanogamy means pollination of one flower by another growing on the same plant. Gaitanogamy. G Y T E N O G A M Y. Gaitanogamy. Great try. But the correct spelling is G E I T O N O G A M Y. Great try. And that marks the end of round four. And we have our top four spellers. All right, amazing. Um, congratulations to everyone who competed today, and especially to our top four spellers. Um, so, our top four spellers are first. Speller 77, Saharsh Vopala. Um, speller 80, Vayan Krishna. Um, next is Speller 131, Akshita Balaji. Oh, whoops, that's my timer. Um, and then our last speller is Speller 162, Achyuth Atiraj. So you guys will be going to the grand finals tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central time, and we will send you out that we'll send out that information to you all later today. But congratulations, and we're really excited to see how you guys do tomorrow. And thank you, and congratulations again to everyone who competed today. You guys are all amazing spellers. Yeah, congratulations, everybody. You did amazing.